Okay, first off, I'm just gonna make a note of this. Some of the chrome plating, looks like this is a chrome plated part. And some of the chrome plating is beginning to come off of the sear on this 320. This is, uh, this is my X5 Legion. And it looks like just on the rubbing surface, the wear surface here, the sear itself looks to still have all of the coating on it. Okay, now to the main video. Uh, I was watching, I think the channel's name is uh, 3P320s in a trench coat or something like that. And what he was saying is that there is a test and for his pistols that had failed, the striker drop test one of the, as I take this copper depressor, you'll see that my trigger safety plunger, which that's here, and what it does is presses up on the hook, which is a disconnector for the striker. And what he was saying is on pistols that failed, a sear push down striker drop test what was happening is that there was a foot on the back of the sear that interacted with the trigger bar presumably so that way when they were having drop safety issues they were using the springs of the sear and had them connected to the trigger bar so that way the force required for the trigger to depress as in if the weapon was dropped but also your felt spring pressure uh, is doubled pretty much by these springs being uh, attached via that foot on the sear to the trigger bar and his temporary solution was to grind that off so that perhaps the pistol is slightly less drop safe now although I doubt it, but that now, even if the sear is manually depressed, that doesn't move now. It's no longer connected by the back of the sear to the trigger bar. It's still connected to the front of the trigger bar and does what it's supposed to do, but that you can't make it move by depressing the sear manually. So, and I don't quite understand how that worked with manual safety guns because the manual safety gun is supposed to stop the trigger bar anyway. But if you'll pay close attention, the amount of tolerance there is between the safety and the trigger bar, you might be able to see if I can hold this steady enough that just to the right of the sear the trigger safety disconnector moves a little bit even with the safety on see that now it's at the max of its travel and it just kind of sticks there because of whatever friction or whatever has it there so that's the tolerance stacking if you had one that even with the safety on that that amount of movement is enough to push the striker safety lever up and out of the way of the striker, that then an inadvertent movement of the sear at the same time could cause the striker to fall on a loaded round. So I'm not sure if this completely solves the issue, but when I looked at the parts and the way they moved and interacted with each other, it seemed important enough that I've made that modification on mine. For me, 
having a little more trust in the striker safety lever does make me feel better about carrying the gun with a loaded chamber. So I, this is kind of long winded and you guys can figure out what you think about it. And it's like, well, I know in the comments, like there's always like a, like I'll solve it for you. Don't buy a 320. I agree. If I was, if I was just getting into polymer pistols again and know what I know now, I absolutely would not have. But at the time when I purchased it, like after quite a bit of like studying on which striker fired polymer pistol suited my needs the most, um, this was the most available and appeared to be the best one. So now I'm invested in two of these things. I'm not made of money. I can't just go and replace a couple of expensive polymer guns uh, without preparing a little bit. So I, like, I'm kind of invested in trying to make these run. And furthermore, I don't think it's quite ethical for me to turn around and burn a couple of handguns that I think are unsafe enough for me. Like, so then I just sell them used to someone who's going to suffer the same amount of safety issues, but be even perhaps less aware of the problem and therefore inadvertently act unsafer. Like I would be contributor to that. So I think it's important that we, like those of us who do own these things, like really try our best to figure out what it is that's causing this and hold SIG accountable for figuring out what's causing this and not just selling off our problems to someone who knows a little bit less. So.